Welcome to this short series of tutorials on the camera tracker node for NUCAX. In this third tutorial we're going to look at tracking and solving on stereo footage. So we've got a clip here with a very smooth, small camera movement and we've got a left and right eye we're going to track and solve. So there's a left view and here we've got a right view. OK, so if you look at the camera tracker in a stereo setup, there's a few differences you're going to notice. So first of all, you get a principal view. You can also create a stereo rig. And under the solver tab, you have a set of solver constraints for stereo footage. So the principal view sets up which view is used as the hero for tracking and solving. So typical style, we're going to want to set up our tracking first. So let's preview the features. So the way the tracking works is it picks up the features in our principal view and tracks them across to the right eye here, because we're using left as the principal, and over time. So the tracks it creates exist in all views. So I'm going to be lazy with this shot. I'm not going to create a garbage map. There's only a few track points it's picking up on the people. But actually, I'm going to stick up the number of features to track because I'm going to have to so throw away some of the ones that are being picked up on the moving foreground. Everything else looks pretty reasonable. So we've got lots of nice points on fixed locations to track and solve from. Let's switch that off. OK, so let's track. So here we have the track results. And we want to review how good those tracks are over the timeline. So it's picking up quite a few points here on the people. We're going to want to make sure the solver throws those away. So let's go to the Refine tab and have a look at our tracks first. So there are a few tracks here with a short length. So I'm just going to bring up this minimum length threshold. Make sure we're only using the nice long tracks, which are in view for long periods of time. And you can see that there's quite a few red points coming out on the moving elements. So this is because the tracker does a camera solve as it does the track. So it's terminating these tracks because they're moving too much. They don't fit a fixed 3D point. So straight away, we can go and throw away quite a lot of the points on the people. Let's delete those rejected points. Okay, we should have good tracks now. Let's go and solve the camera. So let's go and have a look at our right pine tab and have a look at the errors we've got on our tracks. So it's not too bad. There's some obviously with some glitches. So let's bring down that maximum threshold, something reasonable. Let's go for some nice round numbers here. And make sure we have some green tracks covering the sequence. You notice it's rejecting all the ones that are near the people where the tracking has gone wrong. And let's go in and clear those out. I'm fairly confident because I, I don't have to recalculate the solve because I can see there's lots of green tracks locked around here. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with the tracks. Let's just go and solve it from those tracks. OK, I'm going to create a stereo rig. And let's have a look at those cameras in 3D. So what's particularly important with inserting CG elements here is to make sure 
that we don't have any jitter between the left and right eye. Because once you put down that CG element and the camera shifts, you'll see a sh it'll ruin the stereo effect. So I'm going to look at the translations I've got out. You can see here there's a little bit of noise coming in. So one thing you can do in the camera tracker under the solver tab is you can set a smoothness. So what this will do is it will smooth out the camera path but it will recalculate the rotation to lock the camera down to the plate. So you'll get a nice smooth motion but the rotation will still satisfy the motion. So if we look at our translations again, you can see you've got a nice smooth path. But actually this was one on a track. I can actually go in and lock it down to a linear path. Don't need any smoothness, it's going to be completely straight. Let's solve again with a linear camera constraint. Okay, if we look at our translations, there's no gist between those left and right eyes. Okay, so let's go in and set up our scene. Let's set some ground points. Check in 3D. Lay on the ground. Yep. So let's set the ground plane to those selected points. And have a look at that camera path again. So perfectly straight. So I mentioned before, you get a set of extra solver constraints now under the solver tab. So aligned stereo cameras here means that it's aligning the optical axis. So you can see here, the left and right eye perfectly sit on top of each other. Now the reason for this is because there's an ambiguity between the position, Z position of the camera, and the depth of the points, and the focal length it calculates. So if you want to make sure those cameras' optical axes are locked down, you use the aligned stereo cameras constraints. And we can also constrain the interaxials. So this is a locked off stereo rig, so I'm going to set the interaxial distance and convergence to be constant. And it will go away and it will calculate the best distance and best convergence. OK, so we've got a locked off camera on a perfectly linear path. Let's check our errors are still good, 1.17. That's reasonable. Now in stereo, you also get to set the interaxial distance for the camera to scale the world up. So when you do a camera solve, by default, everything sits sort of in the unit world. So you'll see this is at distance of one. Everything is around one away. So that's not realistic. So I can go in and I can set an interaction separation here. And it will go and scale up the world appropriately. So there's our scaled world. OK, so that's the end of the third tutorial in the series for the camera tracker in UKX. It's just looked at stereo camera solves. Stereo adds a few more parameters into the camera tracker. You can set the principal view that's used to pick up and track points. The tracks exist in all eyes, and the solve solves all cameras simultaneously. So it gets the best fit left and right view for the tracks that exist in both views simultaneously. The solver adds a few more constraints. So you can set the optical axes as aligned. You can also set it as a locked off interaxial and locked off convergence. Under the scene tab, you can also set a locked off interaxial distance. So you can set the appropriate scale in the world.